Motherfucker, man, I feel like I, I shouldn't even go unless I'm hitting the stage of that motherfucker, and I ain't did nothing worthy for me to hit the stage yet. But that's my mentality. At least host should bring some motherfuckers up. So, but anyway, blessing, blessed to everybody listening. I'm glad you fucking with me because I know you. Can doing some other shit other than listening to me spit this motherfucking conversation game you feel me so i appreciate you for fucking with me and um let us get it in it to this shit right here our sponsors is as follows our first sponsor is uh fresh start vitamins.com freshstartvitamins.com you want to hit the website you want to get the 30 day you want to get the 30 you want to get the 30 day supply man because that's for the lower price man but you can go get them at 7-Eleven different places man they bomb they good for you man I fuck with them like I said man they increasing the volume of the nut when you busting the nut when you fucking man I done, I done, I done evaluated and calculated you get more nuts when you use that. I don't know how it's possible, but it's 
possible. I'm trying to told you, keeping it honest and real with y'all motherfuckers. Because Balls from Act love y'all motherfuckers. We want you to be healthy. You feel me? Our second sponsor is Trojan Ultra Thin Bare Skin Condoms, my nigga. You want to stop? Hey, listen. All my youngsters out there, man, off of them good narcotics, man. Because, hey. The opioid epidemic is in full swing. I can't stop it. All I can tell you is, man, put on a hat before you do that. All these random bitches, man. I'm trying to told you, man. I'm trying to told you, man. But I know how it is out there, man. Especially all of my peoples, the powder peoples, man. Niggas be, I mean... I know how it is, man. The, the powder bring out wild shit immediately. Next thing you know, you getting your dick sucked, man. Next thing you know, you fucking outside in the car with a bitch you don't know, my nigga. Come on, my nigga. Focus. Trojan Ultra Thin Condoms. Bare skin. Stop rolling the dice. You know what I'm saying? I know. Uh, you feel me? Okay. Our final sponsor is BallSmackStreetwear.com. Go to BallSmackStreetwear.com. Get you some BallSmack Streetwear. Limited edition t-shirts in there. Plus, uh, my old favorites, man. My staples is in there. You know, I'll be bringing back certain ones, but we keep the staples in there because they never stop selling, man. The bitch relaxes and the general logo joinage. But fuck with the Ball Smack Top Soil. New colorways coming, man. Go to BallSmackStreetwear.com right now to get that. Yeah. Let it, let us begin getting off and into the show. Let me see here, man. Niggas in the news. Niggas in the motherfucking news and, um, let me see, man. How we gonna start this shit off, man? I think we should start off serious. We should start off serious. Um, Rallo Fam Goon. Rallo Fam Goon. Uh, I don't know if y'all know about them youngster coming up out there. I think he's from the A. A down South Alabama, somewhere down there, man. You know, I always keep an eye on him, man, because he's such a motherfucking. He's so ridiculous with his flossing, man. I mean, I'ma say this, man. You know, I love niggas, man. I want all niggas hearing my voice right now to know I love y'all. Ball Smack Topsoil loves y'all. I love real niggas. And I love to see y'all getting it. And I love to see y'all doing, getting money and doing it and, and doing the right thing, man. But, <clears throat> you know, Rollo caught a nigga attention because, you know, the nigga was so flamboyant. Count money. Every time I seen a nigga, he count money. You feel me? He bragging about how he used to sell dope and how I don't sell dope no more. And the police can't, can't fuck with me, can't catch me. Bruh, like, and see, it's so hard to talk to. You can't talk to the youngsters when they're in that state of mind. You have to let it play out like this. You have to step back and be like, okay, well, let's let it play out. You cannot tell a nigga, like, yo, my nigga, uh, all the alphabets of the government are watching you do this, man, right here. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers do not like to see you with that paper, man. You think niggas hate seeing you with that paper. The white people that hate seeing you with that paper is so monstrous. The niggas, if it, you know what I'm saying? It would be like if the niggas, to me, in the, the level of hate that come upon a motherfucker for doing like how Rollo is, a motherfucker, it's like a fucking ant. Like niggas would be like an ant. And the hate of white people will be like a human being standing next to it. But you can't even see the hate. You can't even see the human being. You understand me? And the hate is that gigantic focused on you. And you can't even see it. You feel me? Because they don't do the shit you do. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, you, you tripping off the niggas that hate you. 
but it's the white people that hate you for doing that shit. You feel me? But I, I you know, we can't, I, I know niggas is never going to stop doing none of that shit, man, because it's the only way to get yours off. It's the only way for you to receive any type of, of uh, acknowledgement, uh, any type of uh, uh, credibility unless you do that shit. You feel me? Even though just having the money and having the money and possessing it is the true everything. Nobody has to ever see the money. You having the money is the key to all of it. You feel me? And separating your you from your money is what the white people do at the end. Every time with niggas like this, they get separated from their money. Not not by niggas don't do it. It be white people to separate them from their money. Okay, Rallo Fam Goon. I know he doing something. I'm watching him. I'm watching him. He just coming up. When I come on the gram, he just he just in the. He just in the in the in the first part of you know whatever that first part explore page whatever that shit is. He just in there counting money, talking shit. I'm like, man, this nigga is wow. Niggas is niggas is really. And then I mean, man. But anyway, I'm going all in a tangent. If y'all don't know what happened to him, his operation was uh was uh moving work moving work through the private planes like you know taking hundreds of pounds of weed from state to state in the private plane and then just you know f- walking out the airport with the with the with the weed and go straight to wherever and sell it and just come back and get on the plane and leave and just it's a great business model so great business model it is a great business model. That's a great business model. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got some hundreds of thousands, if you if you got a hundred thousand, and you can just get the private plane for like fifteen racks and spend the rest on weed, you getting all that back. You feel me? It's a, that's a beautiful model. But see, I, I imagine you know you're not thinking about. The white people that work for the uh, the airport and the and the uh, the white people that work for the airport, the airport employees and shit that look like regular people all around the little airport, and then the uh, um, people that work for the uh, the uh, the uh, company itself, the people that work for the private jet company. You don't know who the fuck they are. You feel me? And then here y'all come getting on the on the plane. And and here you is with all your diamonds on. on the plane. Yeah, you don't know who the fuck they are, man. And and then you got the people that work for the private jet company motherfuckers that's 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 working for you on the plane. You think them white people like working for some niggas? With jewelry on, talking hella country, talking shit on here, counting damn near two, three hundred thousand dollars, taking pictures and shit. You think they like seeing that shit? And and uh, look, you can only do that shit so many times before you know what I'm saying. Motherfuckers is mad. Look, niggas, niggas. I remember, man. Back in the days, man, a nigga was doing some, um, a nigga was doing some criminal shit. This is like in the 90s, man, and, um, like late 90s. Nigga had an office, and then a nigga was getting shit shipped to the office. You know what I'm saying? We was running plays, having shit sent to the office. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, after a few uh, months of being there, then we just vanish and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, 
we, you know, I, 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 I shared the office with this Russian dude who was, I think, was like a, like a low key, like a little Russian gangster. But I didn't know that shit at the time. I kind of found out later. But anyway, I rented this office. I rented a, half the office from him. And you know, I show up with a suit on and be waiting, you know, on the phone, waiting for shit to come on, doing paperwork and shit, front, and then shit come, and then you know. So. Anyway, he must have been there and something came, like a package came and it had like a different name on it. And then he was like, okay. So when I met up with him to do the, to pay rent, he was like, yeah, I seen, you know, a package came, you know, it had uh, such and such name on it. I was like, oh yeah, that's for me. He was like, all right. Uh, he was like, yeah, that was for you. He was like, okay, well, I, I just wanted to say, man, you know, um, just just so you know, you know what I'm saying? The building that we in has been raided by the feds five times in the last six, seven months. Just so you know that. <laughs> I was like, I feel you, man. I, I, I'm like, dog. I'm like, he's like, look, man. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just telling. You. And I. I, I I, I put. He said, "I put it to you like this: You can speed on the freeway all you want. You could drive 150 and get away with it all the time, all the time. 150. But he said, but all it takes is for them to see you one time, and it's a wrap. You feel me? And I was like, Yo, man, I feel you, bro. I feel you. I feel you." Real talk, real talk. But anyway, that's the Rilo fam goon thing, man. Here you, this nigga is, he gotta be a million on Instagram followers. If he not a million, he close to it. He gotta be a million. He got a music guy. He got a record called Ock Shit, Pop Shit, Fuck 12, Fuck the Police. He got a Fuck the Police song out. I done seen him and his crew Because he the leader of his team I done seen him and his crew Doing Islamic chants and shit Out there in his Wherever they at in Alabama Parking the Lambo out there All kind of luxury vehicle Count money all the time Talking hella shit And I'm like bro What I mean like What do you do legitimately to justify the paper that you have bro when you been told you told the world that you have made millions from selling dope but you stop now I stop now you 25 you look you 25 what the fuck you was, you said you had you making millions when you was 19 20 21 22 you stop now you still got the money nigga that's at least that's drug money nigga how do you have the fuck? How do you justify the paper? You feel me? How do you justify the paper? Now the feds come in and just turn a nigga, turn that nigga broke. They came in like a magic wand. The feds have a magic wand to turn an ignorant nigga broke. If you ain't ready for them to hit you, even the smartest, the smartest, even if you do the smartest Italian mafia motherfuckers don't even have they shit all the way ready for when they come and get touched by that magic federal wand when the feds pop you. When the feds come and touch you with the magic wand and turn you to motherfucking stone, all your money turn to stone. The, 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 unless you can prove that money is legitimate. And the only way you can do that is if you smart than a motherfucker set up hella precautions and 99% of niggas are dumb as fuck and can't even do that, nigga. It's clever white boys that fail to do that shit, nigga. To have your shit ready for when the feds hit you, when the feds come and say, okay, nigga, you... Ta-da, we've been watching you, nigga. Because that's how they come. Ta-da, we've been watching you. All your shit is illegal. 
Matter of fact, nigga, you can't even. We, 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 we gon' we. Matter of fact, the way the fans do it, you don't even get no bail until we feel like it. <laughs> so it's like, nigga, you just in, nigga, you can't even. Ain't no bail right quick, nigga. Sit. Surprise, touch you, nigga, and, and any money you got, nigga, if you can't prove where every penny came from, nigga, he's money laundering, and that's extra charges, nigga, talking about bailing out, nigga. You bailing out with what, nigga? How you get that money, nigga? Nigga, how? Okay, nigga, you bailing out? Okay, yeah, your bail is, uh, your bail is 500. Look what they did to, look what they did to Jules Santana. I think his bail is half a million. And he had a gun and some pills. He had a gun and eight pills. And he was and they know that he wasn't trying to sell drugs. They know he was just going somewhere and was on some retarded shit and forgot his gun and in there and he was just had the pills because he a fucking drug addict. You know what I'm saying? This nigga for <laughs> Nigga, okay. How they popped him. That's how they popped him. You flying in the airport. You flying in the airport in front of white people like a clown. We don't even know. You have, okay, you're a rapper. You're a rapper, but your song is not that fucking hot to justify you moving around in a fucking private jet, nigga. You ain't no, you ain't popping like that, nigga. You ain't, you can't even rap that good. Your shit ain't even that tight, nigga. You feel me? So here you is moving in the private jet with all the jewelry on and your goonery. I'm going to just assume, I'm going to just assume, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you benefit of the doubt that didn't nobody smoke weed on there. That sounds stupid as fuck, huh? I'm going to give you benefit of the doubt that didn't nobody smoke weed on the private jet, even though I know they did because they some ignorant motherfuckers. So they probably smoking weed on the private jet while they moving four, 500 pounds a week. Then the niggas just unload the weed out in the open <laughs> at the airport. I bet you they didn't even have like a little hanger where they pull into the hanger and close the hanger and then <laughs> unload it. But the feds would have been on that too. And that wouldn't have stopped nothing. That wouldn't have stopped nothing. The feds would have been on that too. But niggas just pull up, unload the weed out in the open. Drive and you know, drive just casually drive to where they're gonna get it off at. But the feds popped it one time, so <laughs> so after they got popped, I don't know how they got popped. I don't know how the feds was on them the first time. I, well, hey man, like I said, nigga all on IG clowning. You know, if I'm listen, man, man. I think, man. Okay, the feds is the feds figured it out. So they was on them. Flew in with four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds. I think five hundred pounds worth a million. Niggas just get cracked. Some of his boys get cracked. Now I, I don't know how. If I'm assuming them, well, it don't really matter. They knew it was his weed. It don't matter if they told or not. They know it was his weed because everybody had on the fam goon wear because that's his gear. Everybody had on the fam goon gear like a uniform. Like this is our drug dealing uniform. The fam goon gear. <laughs> on the fam goon gear, right? Then the nigga got some identification to himself in the van. They rent it. (laughs) 
Niggas get caught 400, 400 pounds. I think that's like, I'm not sure. I got to check the numbers on that. I think it's like two tons. It might be it might be a ton. A ton is like if you get caught moving a ton, it's like bad as fuck with weed. Like some shit like ten ten years or some shit. I think that I think they shit is like that's like a five year. I think that's like I think that's like five years that uh that uh that much weed. Cause I think between like a hundred pounds and like a ton. I gotta check the numbers. I gotta check the numbers. It might be a ton or a thousand pounds. And then once you have like a thousand pounds, then it get bad. Like it, they try to do you in like you're a kingpin or some shit. But up until that, it might be like five years. So it really ain't that bad. You know what I'm saying? But it's a mandatory five years you got to do that five years and if you've been to the pen before you're gonna be fucked they're gonna fuck you up they fucking you up they fucking you up man the feds be fucking man listen man nigga, man niggas okay so his guy got caught with 500 he got the fam gonna get basically the feds know it's him right so what he do is he go on IG on social media and he says he do some soliloquy shit where he say y'all don't know how it feel to lose a million dollars in one day listen man all I can say is hey man like Niggas be throwing bricks at the penitentiary and then they come out and get them and bring them in to the penitentiary. You know what I'm talking about? Niggas. Niggas get caught. Then niggas load up another shipment and try to bring in another shipment to, you know, because that's what you do when you get caught. When some shit get caught, you try to run it back real fast to get that back. You know what I'm saying? And it, you, you really got to double down on everything to get it all back. And and you hoping that the operation is still intact. So you really see that's a funny thing about when some get when some get got when 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 niggas ship some shit or do something and niggas get and the shit go bad and niggas get popped. See, nine times out of ten, when that happened, you got to keep going. And that's a hard keep going right there because you don't know if they on you. You feel me? You don't know if they on you. You don't know if the whole operation has. First of all, you don't know if they on you. And then you don't know if the whole operation is fucked up. You feel me? And then you got to proceed forward under that type of stress, which may be the it may be the finisher, or you may come through. You know, I've seen niggas in that type of scenario come through because of the loss was because of something other than law enforcement really just being on them like that. But if law enforcement intercept your shit, which the feds is nice at doing that, intercept your shit, get some of your people, and then it go dark. You don't know what's the fuck going on. And then your people telling you what you want to hear. You know, they telling you what exactly what you want to hear. Hey, man, um, I told them it was me. It's all good. I, I'm in here. Um, you know, um, waiting to find out what the bail is, but it ain't no bail when it's federal. You feel me? It's a while for that bail come. They let you sit. You feel me? So during this time, imagine that your people got popped. Two of your mans is in there, right? 
right? You got to hope they don't tell, and you got to take care of their families and shit. So it's a certain amount of people that know about this happening. And then you got to proceed forward and still try to get some shit out there, not knowing if the operation is compromised. So nigga load up 400 more pounds and do the same shit again. Feds waiting on him. So the feds redirect a nigga f- flight in the f- mid-flight. Now, the, y'all can't go to this airport. You got to go to another airport. Now, at that point, if I was him, if I was him, man, I I, I, I probably would have I, I'd have been trying to throw weed out the car, out the plane, man. I'd have been like, yo, we got to open up. We got to fly low, and we got to throw weed out of this motherfucker, man. You call, you call. It's, 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 it's bad, but I, I don't know. It's bad. It's bad. Rallo, fam, goon. If, 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 he's done. I, I can't see him getting out of this. A lot of times, you know, I be, you know, niggas get caught up in some bullshit, and I be like, eh, he should get out of that. It should be cool. Just, uh, just be in jail for a minute or something. So, nah, I don't know if this nigga gonna get out of this shit right here, man. I don't know about this right here, man. I don't know, my nigga. I don't know, my nigga. All right, now. Our next nigga in the news is Starbucks racist as fuck. Or is they? Starbucks racist as fuck or is they? Let me examine this topic. You all know about the guy in the guys in Philadelphia at the coffee shop at at the Starbucks waiting in Starbucks for that for their buddy to come so they can have a meeting and then you know what I'm saying and then you know they was just sitting in there waiting so they could have a meeting and then he want to use the bathroom restroom and 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 now y'all can't use the restroom fuck that can't use the restroom you got to buy something you know what I'm saying it turn into y'all got to get out. They don't leave. Call the police, and then they get arrested, fair and square, on some trespass. All right. <clears throat> Where I stand on this issue as the ball smack top soil like a motherfucker. Listen, I'm gonna say this just like this, my nigga. I go to Starbucks every motherfucking day, man. For me, they got the cheapest shit. They got the cheapest because I get shots of espresso straight. I don't get all the other shit in there. They take care of me. The bitches is cool with me. They love me in the morning. The bitches, I love seeing my set of bitches at my Starbucks. I, all the Starbucks I got, I go to got certain bitches I like. You know what I'm saying? If y'all bitches listening, y'all know, y'all know what's popping. But anyway, they be they fuck with me on the gram too. A lot of them bitches, they be on my Instagram pages. Some of them be rocking my clothes and shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, yeah, man, um, this is my this is my this is what I noticed about Starbucks. Well, no, I start with first. I start with a general premise. I start with a general premise of me as myself if I had some shit. If I had if I had a bathroom, if I had a business with a bathroom, you can't use the bathroom unless you break bread with me. Period. Because you're gonna come in my bathroom and you're gonna piss, you're gonna shit. You're gonna make it dirty, and I'm gonna have to clean it up, which is gonna, it's labor for me. So, bottom line, if you're gonna come in there, piss and shit, I'm gonna need you to cop something. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if it's a cookie, I don't give a fuck if it's a motherfucking, uh, a motherfucking, uh, muffin, a motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, a little with soda. You got to break bread, and then you can fuck with my shit. You feel me? Period. That's where I stand with that. Period. 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 
now it's another instance where at this at the Starbucks out here in Hawthorne, where a nigga was in there and he he came in and he tried to go to the restroom real fast, and then the bitch wouldn't let him. And then a white dude came out and he asked the white dude if he had um, paid for something before he got the code. And the white dude said no. So then, you know, then dude made a big deal out of it and was like, okay, I feel that too. I feel that shit too. I feel that shit too right there. I feel that shit too. Period. My position on that is... You know, Starbucks, to me, is like the front line to the streets in a lot of ways. A lot of times, man, it's like a lot of a lot of transients be up in Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? Starbucks be having a lot going on, and it get full quick. You feel me? And I feel like if you ain't broke bread... You shouldn't be fucking with nothing in there. Now, I done ran in Starbucks plenty times having to piss and just had to just go in there and piss. You know what I'm saying? But once again, I'm fucking with Starbucks to know me and shit like that. If I go to a Starbucks that don't know me, you know, I go to the counter and I, you know, I I, I, I let a motherfucker know like, yo, I'm finna buy something, but I'm doing bad right now. And just get the, you feel me? Like, I'm, I'm really gonna buy something. Matter of fact, I want to, you know, because I can't even wait in line, man. I'm going to piss on myself. You feel me? So, look, I'm going to buy something. What's the code? Matter of fact, hold this dollar. What's the code? You feel me? <laughs> Shit. You know what I mean? Because I know I done seen them dealing. I done seen, I done seen uh, little bitches. Now, see, I done seen little ass bitches have to, and it's a, it's a homeless motherfucker encamped in the, um, in the bathroom on them, and they can't get him out. You feel me? I done seen that a lot of times, man. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, one of my little bitches, one of the little bitch I fuck with, man, she cool. Man, this bitch, she like a little artist now. She don't even work at Starbucks no more, but I seen her turn up on motherfucking homeless motherfucker, man. Big ass homeless motherfucker was in there shooting up hair around in the bathroom. She's like, no, you cannot be in there shooting drugs. It's not right. You live in drug paraphernalia in here and you come in here. It's not fucking right. Get out there. Oh, man, it was crazy. Little white bitch, man. Crazy. But I say that to say this. It's some racist motherfuckers working at Starbucks, man. Period. It is. But the way I see it, it's a private business. It ain't a public, it ain't a public restroom outside and shit. You feel me in the park, nigga? Hey. Niggas got to work, niggas got to clean that shit up. You gotta buy something, man. That's 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 where I that's where I draw the line. I gotta work. You gotta pay. Period. That's you know what I'm saying. So I feel them though. I feel like I, I feel Starbucks jumping on this. Starbucks gonna shut shit down for a day. I see that move. They jumped on this hard. You know what I'm saying. But at the end of the day, man, I'm gonna keep it 100, man. Like. Um, everybody, it's a, everybody is pretty much racist out here, man. I'm fucking with Starbucks, bro, because you know what I'm saying. The shit is cheaper. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Period, bro. It's cheaper. You know. And the little bitches I fuck with is cool, man. You know, them little bitches be looking out for me. They be giving me a lot of free shit. Starbucks, I be getting a lot of free shit, man. They be looking out for me, them little bitches. Got little bitches. <gasps> little bitches. Um. Damn, man. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's keep it going. Our next nigga in the motherfucking news is motherfucking Cardi B taking over the world and motherfuckers can't take it. Motherfuckers don't like it. Hey, man. 
like I said, I know a lot of my people listening to me don't like the ball smack talking about Cardi B like that. I be talking about Cardi B all the time, man. She's such a great bitch, man. She is such a great bitch. I love the bitch, man. Period, bro. I seen this. I seen this finna happen. I seen this shit. I seen it. I seen it. I seen it gonna happen. I seen it. I seen it, nigga. To see it is crazy. You know. Like I said, her managers that I fucked with, niggas, is gone. Nigga, she got a whole nother management team, whole nother shit. You feel me? And see, when you see a motherfucker like Funk Flex going off on her, he mentioned that shit. Shaft, how Shaft came up there all the time, pressing the line, trying to get him to play Cardi Records and shit. And I admit, her early shit, I didn't really like it like that, but I saw the potential in that shit. Certain songs, to me, was dope enough to be on the radio, though. Certain ones was dope enough. I think they they low-key slept on like that, um, like that one song, um, you know I gotta, you know I, I don't do nothing for free. You know I gotta charge when I'm done. They be like, you better, you better. I, when I heard that song, I knew that I knew that bitch had potential, man, right there. Man. Bruh. <sighs> she taking over everything. She the leader of white bitches. I'm in a Coachella. And then, like, my people say, I don't know her Coachella performance, you know what I'm saying? Um, Pregnant, twerking on stage, a lot of motherfuckers don't like that. Me, personally, I support it. Bitch, keep doing you, keep doing you. Bitch, go on Ellen. Bitch, 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 bitch is the shit on Ellen. The bitch is the shit on, on, um. On Jimmy Fallon. The bitch can have her own show, man. I'm telling you, man. Somebody, I know one of these networks got to be trying to get this. Man, this bitch, man. I'm telling you, man. 13. Bitch had 13 singles on the Hot 100, man. Just some ridiculous, unheard of, unreal shit. 13 singles. On the Hot 100, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that's some hell of a... That's a hell of a feat, man. That's a hell of a motherfucking feat, man. You know. Motherfuckers want to be talking shit about her. She don't be writing her lyrics. I got an issue with hip-hop and writing lyrics and shit like that, man. Um, You know... I don't know why motherfuckers can't see. I think when 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 you measure when you measure when you measure a song, uh, 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 when you measure a, a rap song, you checking for the beat. You checking for the lyrical. You checking for the performance. Cause you hear the performance first, then the lyrics sink in. The lyrical content sinks it sinks in, but the performance and the way the voice sounds is with the beat pulls you in. Okay, so the performance is a value, just like singing. Like Whitney Houston sang Dolly Parton's song better than her. Period. Like, I will always love you. Whitney Houston crush. And, and, but Dolly Parton wrote it, though. You feel me? So, it is what it is. It, Dolly Parton be like, yo, she crushed. I, I got paid because I wrote it. But her performance is of value. I feel like that with rapping. Everybody cannot rap. Everybody ain't good at rapping. Everybody voice ain't right for that. So it's a performance value. Cardi B voice is dope. Period. Her voice is dope. 
Her voice is dope. Up there, her voice is up there in, on the same level as Nikki. Period. Now, oh, she didn't write all the lyrics. Well, if she didn't write all the lyrics, whoever wrote the lyrics wrote lyrics that sound like shit that she would say in the whole album. The whole album is a lyrical content of shit you expect her to say on her Instagram page. or Whenever you hear her talk, you expect her to say the shit that's on her album. So whoever wrote it, wrote it from her perspective, and that's valid. So I feel like, and then Drake, we know that Drake, possibly don't write all this shit and we don't hold we we not tripping i'm not tripping you know what i'm saying meek mill went to war with drake because he pointed out that he don't write his lyrics he pointed out hey this nigga don't write his lyrics and drake killed him with two bombed on him with two songs that we don't even know if he wrote which it's a it's a question if he wrote and, and meek mill tried to respond he he lost so it don't I feel like it don't matter if you write your lyrics or not. As long as whoever is writing for you is writing some shit that's like if 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 that's representative representative of you and your character, hey man, that's that's what it is, man. I think rapping is just like singing. There's a performance value. You got something to say about it You said in the comments But I'm just saying man So You know Now The Cardi B Nicki Minaj war That's about to really pop off here Cause You know I thought Maybe it wasn't gonna, It's gonna be a war This war has Is destined This war is destined What's funny about this war Is that both bitches is fighting dirty. It's dirty war already. It's a dirty war, espionage, sabotage, all kind of shit is going on. Gathering information on the enemy on both sides. All of that shit is going on. Nikki, motherfuckers thought Nikki was washed low key. Nikki went underground, came back with the Chung Lee and Barbie things. I'm not fucking with Barbie things, but Chung Lee is some real, some real nice shit. I feel like, oh, and then Nikki got the PR campaign where she came out with the, with the, where she broke down with the fake crying and shit, like a real ass pro season devilish bitch. Nicki Minaj is a seasoned ass real bitch in them trenches, man. I, she been through some shit, man. She a real bitch too. She a real bitch too, man. Um. I feel like in this case, what we have here is popular opinion is on Cardi's side. But 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 Nikki got a lot of fans out there. A lot of bitches I fuck with is really supporting Nikki. I was surprised. And then it's a lot of bitches just like, fuck Nikki for real. Like I'm tired of that bitch. So I I see it as almost a divide of it might be like a divide between the youth. Youth and you know old bitches, young bitches could be like in this because you know Nikki representing them thirty year old bitches and shit. You feel me? So it could be a divide between the old and the young. Now the war is still unfolding. It's still fluid. Nikki dropped. People feeling it. Her album. We don't know what she got. You know what I'm saying? She get to make adjustments. It looks good, but Cardi momentum is so powerful. So powerful. I feel like I told niggas, man, we in a new era of entertainment, man. Yo, yo, entertainment gotta be intertwined with um with Instagram. It gotta be intertwined, intertwined with Instagram and, uh, and social media and YouTube and it gotta be intertwined. You gotta be popping in something like in, in one of those areas, you really got to be a master in those areas. You got to be every, like when you think about Cardi presence on 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 social media, it's almost like she's a god. She's everywhere. She's she, there's manifestations of her everywhere 
everywhere. It's manifestations of her everywhere. And I think that along with music is what dictates dictate dictates greater success in this era. I've been debating this with niggas. Just the little pumps and all this shit, all of this high. You gotta be, man, I gotta get better at this shit. I'm fucking up. I gotta do more on Instagram shit. I gotta do more spitting game out there, man. For real, I gotta get on that shit, man. Goddamn. The fuck? <laughs> but anyway, the war is brewing. Uh, can't wait to see what happens next. I like watching bitches fight. You know what I'm saying? I love watching bitches fight. All right. J. Cole, new album, K.O.D. K.O.D. Um, concept album. Hard to take it in with. I only had a few listens. Um, trying to absorb it. I'm going to say straight off the top. Um, the emotional... Um, energy from the album is like medication. You feel me? I don't know if niggas gonna be wanting to take the medication because it ain't like it, it ain't like a um, you know, it's a it's okay. First of all, the nigga the lyricals the lyrical skills display is of the highest order. The metaphors, it's of the highest order. It's dope. The only thing is the 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 the, the emotional stimulation of this is like, you know, it's it's gonna make you, you know, it's it's a depressed album. It's gonna make you depressed. Think about your problems. Think about how you're fucking up. How you could probably what you you know what can I do to get better? It ain't like he offering the answers, except for just to slow down and think about what you're doing. Which is really, I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, he probably don't even know what the fuck. You feel me? But that that type of to me that type of album, like when niggas need music, I feel like niggas gotta. Niggas got to use the energy of the music for them. Like, it got to help them through the day. I feel like that's the best kind of music. Like, the music that makes me motivated to get up and tackle my problems in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, some type of fight theme music or, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, some optimistic type of shit. But, like, when you, the reflective shit is hard because it's valid. It's valid. It's a place for it. But you don't want to be being in that space on the way to work, though. You feel me? Like, in the morning, like, you're on the way to work. You want to have that bounce, that energy, man. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you know, you going going out to the club that night. You know what I'm saying? You want to, you want a little bit of, but you know, you gotta have. He didn't have no joints like that on there. Everything was reflective, but it was dope. Window pane, it's dope. Um, the intro was kind of weird, but I accept it, you know, because niggas, you learning something. He's trying to show you. I accepted it, though. Um, you know, it, it, it it's a good album, man. Uh, I feel like um, if you compare him and Kendrick, Kendrick didn't give you more of a, uh, it's a more... You get more sounds, man. Like, J. Cole don't give you that much sounds, man. You know what I'm saying? I, and, 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 you know, and, and he do a lot of self, man. I like when niggas, niggas prove they self. I like when niggas prove they self and be like, I don't need no motherfucking features, features, man. I'm by myself. I don't need no features. These motherfuckers out here is whack. Ain't nobody dope. I don't need no motherfucking features. I, I respect that. 
But once you demonstrate that, then you don't need to keep doing that. You need to start approaching this shit like, okay, what do I want to present for motherfuckers? You know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping. If you, especially you're not tripping off of money. So you like, what do I want to give motherfuckers? Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I like hearing niggas. I like hearing the different voices, man. This hip hop shit to me, man, is like jazz, man. I be listening to, you know, them old jazz records and old Miles Davis, and you see, he got the configuration. It be him, Herbie Hancock. Um, John Coltrane and and, and, the, and the drummer Tony I, Tony I forgot his name it, it, Tony something his drummer you know what I'm saying and the different configurations of niggas then I look on this other album and be these, this configuration of niggas and it just gave the flavor that's when I first seen the collab shit back on them Blue Note jazz albums man I was that's when I was I was always on the collab shit because you see that and it's like you see. That okay, these niggas is bringing this. This is this is side effects from being hip hop. This side effects Compton's righteous being in live working on music and shit. Niggas just looking at Blue Note records all day and shit, and just studying, looking at the Blue Note. And then, and then the Blue Note records became like I could. It just to me, to me looking at the Blue Note records and the different artists, it just immediately transferred to hip hop to me like it just transferred to rap music like I just I seen niggas doing music like that I seen like oh man niggas could really get out here and just be like nigga let's hook up for this this right here and vibe for a few days and whatever we make we just put that shit out and just be like see what that shit do fuck it man we just vibe what our vibe together yield anyway I'm on a tangent about fucking blue note records and shit I don't even know why I got on this Oh, I was talking about J. Cole needing to have a feature. Yeah, you got to have a feature, man. You got to have some features, man. Bring in some niggas, man. You know, bring in some bitches. Some harmonics on the hooks, nigga. All right. Shout out to the homie Vince Staples. This, uh, uh R. Kelly at Coachella said he's a weirdo, uh, child molester, and some other shit like that. Child molester, weirdo, and then I think R. Kelly might have said some of maybe might send some killers for him or something. Since nigga, I know R. Kelly got some killers. He got some killers on deck, man. Every nigga with money got some killers on deck because you can't keep your money. So anyway, I heard they want to see Vince Stables. Shout out to Vince Stables for keeping it 100, speaking, saying real shit all, at all times. Fuck that. And I know you fucking Nadeska too, nigga. I'm, pre- I'm watching you, nigga. You fucking Nadeska. You fucking Nadeska that night, nigga. Yes, you did. You fucked Nadeska that night at Coachella, nigga. I could tell. I know you did. And I knew it was going to happen, nigga. Boss Mac seen it, nigga. All right, now. Um, where we at? What else we got to talk about? Let me see. All right. James Comey, book tour. I, I'm tripping off of James Comey out here getting his off. He said, hey, man, all the notes that I took while I was doing meetings with Trump. It's a book, motherfucker. Y'all get the book. Y'all want <laughs> Everybody want to get theirs off, man. The feds want to get theirs off. You see when Orlando Brown got like, they ran up when the when the bounty hunters ran up on Orlando Brown a, a week or two ago or something like that he was on the run. I didn't know. Of course nobody knew Orlando Brown was on the run, but he on the run and they run up on him. They they got the camera out. They ready to get theirs off too, man. They just ready to get to everybody want to get theirs off, man. The feds want to get theirs off. The president want to get his off. The president get mad when he see other motherfuckers trying to get theirs off. Everybody trying to get theirs off, man. Dang. 
Okay. Our final nigga in the news, I think, is we bombing Syria, man. We bombing Syria. We are bombing Syria. It's old news. Everybody knows it's old. We, we used to it now, kind of. We used to it. It's just happening and shit, you know. We bombing them. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not... I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I I don't know that much, man. I'm not the smartest motherfucker, man. I'm not a smart motherfucker, man. I just I be a lot of common sense, observation, you know, just life. But I, I'm I'm gonna try to break this down. I'm trying to understand this. So I want to lay this out, and I want y'all to fuck with me to see if I'm tripping. I don't know if I'm tripping, but I want to see if I'm tripping. Okay. We are bombing Syria because Syria used chemical weapons on their own people trying to get their shit under control. So that means if the United States government bomb some motherfuckers over here with chemical weapons over here then Syria could send jets to bomb us to stop us from bombing our own people with chemical weapons I don't understand all of this imbalance out here man and how motherfuckers just accept that shit man like we live in a weird reality where you expected to think in a common sense fair type of way but you don't hear common sense fair type of shit up at the top you don't hear that don't sound fair and common sense to me like I'm trying to get my, this is my country right here. I don't give a fuck what if this is my country right here, right? This is my country. My country, right? I'm the king, I'm the ruler of my country. This is my government. I'm the president and shit is out of control. I'm trying to get shit under control. So I got to kill some motherfuckers. Okay, so I'm start killing motherfuckers trying to get under control. Then another motherfucker from another country come and bomb me while I'm trying to get my shit under control. So how am I going to get my shit under control? How am I going to get my shit under control? They don't want me to get my shit under control. So what's the fucking alternative, man? And I got I got people I fuck with. This. I got some I got some people. I ain't by myself out here. You know what I'm saying? I live in America though. I'm on the bully side. You know what I'm saying? I got to go along with it. This is the same shit is like This is the same shit is like like in the hood on gang banging. Most of the gang banging in every neighborhood is the young niggas did something. Like some little shit with a bitch or some or some Niggas bumped into each other at the store or somebody fucking somebody bitch or something. And the little niggas. Get a shootout popping. And you over here. You pull up in the hood. You don't even know what happened. Niggas is like, hey man. It's, it's hot, you know, the little homies just, man, you know. 
This is the same kind of shit, man. Like, <laughs> except for the little homies, is is the leaders of the government. It's over here doing some shit, man. Like, you know, it's hot. It's hot now. They they did it. careful watch out man because you know they had a funeral over there today man be careful out there man see that's that see that's that gangbang talk that's that that's that living in the hood talk be careful out there they had a funeral over there in enemy hood today so be careful out there you just trying to get some weed and shit I love my hood, though. Yeah, but yeah, man. We beefing, man. Shout out to uh, Donald Trump not giving a fuck. And, um... I don't know, man. Seems like everybody should be able to have a gun, you know? That's another thing, man. This gun control shit, man. The young kids leading the charge. Um, hey man, I don't, I, I don't think it could be existence without guns, man. Um, we can't be out here without guns, man. Period. I just, you know. You just gotta find out if a motherfucker is crazy before you sell a motherfucker a gun. And then if a motherfucker go crazy and you fi- and you can prove that shit, then take his guns, then then that. But it gotta be guns out here. It gotta be guns out here, man. It cannot be not no guns. It's people is animals, it's crazy people out here. It's just no matter what, there's nothing. It could be done. It must be guns. It cannot be no not guns. So that's my position on that. No matter what. I know y'all could say whatever in the comments. I'm with it. But that's just my opinion. I could have edited, edited that out, but I just really left it in there for effect. But anyway, our next nigga in the motherfucking news. There's a lot of niggas in the news. We've been going, man, because we ain't did a show last week, man. That's what this is. So let me spit this. Uh, Tristan Thompson and uh, Chloe. Um, she already made up with him. It's all boo. It's it's all good. Come on, man. <coughs> so what? He was fucking bitches, man. He deserved to fuck some other bitches. I know bitches out there, man. How foul that is. Hey, man. Come on, man. She the main bitch. He just got to be better with keeping it under wraps. He got to keep that shit <coughs> low key, man. He can't he can't be out here letting bitches take pictures of him. With you know, he can't. You know what I'm saying? You got to be better, more more professional with your dirt. You can't be sloppy like that, man. Come on, man. <coughs> but a nigga, I mean, come on, man. How can you penalize a nigga for that? A nigga got they they got to keep it together. Congratulations to the birth of the new baby, True Thompson, Tristan Thompson. Hey, man, you just got to be more better, man. Shout out to Chloe for blowing it off and just being like, look, nigga. Let a nigga know, be more careful. Be more careful. Move around better. Don't don't be sloppy. Come on now. 
All right. <clears throat> Our next nigga in the motherfucking news, Taylor Swift, covers uh, uh, covers Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, September. I heard it. It just sounds like a white person's song when she do it. Who gives a fuck? Shoot the bag. Shoot the bag over. That's a good bag. Anybody saying anything about that need to shut the fuck up. We want Taylor Swift to do whatever. She can do whatever to the song. Taylor Swift can do whatever with the song. Shoot the bag. We got the OG. We know what the OG is. We play that one. We, we can pretend like that don't exist. Shoot the bag. Anybody talking about that need to shut the fuck up and just, sh- hey man, shoot the bag over there to Maurice White people and whoever else got the right credits for that. And let the bag, let the bag be the bag. You feel me? Fuck out of here talking about you don't like it because it sound whack. It sound like the white version. Remember how they used to do that back in the 50s and the 60s is all these damn versions. And the white version. There ain't no new shit, man. Nigga need to shut the fuck up. Get the bag. Shoot the bag. Shout out to Taylor Swift for uh, breaking off their family with their bag. I fuck with you, Taylor Swift. You, you bull with me. Bay Chella. Beyonce's performance at uh, Coachella. I saw it. Um, obviously, a bitch is going for greatest uh, performer status. Uh, her competition is Mike. Pinnacle, and then she got to deal with Prince, and then she got to fuck around with James Brown, and uh, I, I don't know if Beyonce can surpass them because she's 36 now. I mean, that was a beautiful, hey man, she put it down, man. She's the fourth best performer of all time, I guess, man, because... She really put it down. I mean, the whole band concept, she like she had a drum majorette type of concept. Whole band out there, man. Uh, uh, whole, whole, uh, whole colors unit. Drill team brought out Destiny Child. Jay-Z looked little up there with her. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was just such a magnificent performance. But, <clears throat> you know, Beyonce, I, I mean, I mean, it. if we want to compare her to Mike, you feel me? You know how Mike just had individual moments of greatness on stage that you have to really say to yourself I cannot do that you know what I'm saying there's no way it's not possible to learn to do that I just witnessed it and it has been done and that's it right there I mean few of his concerts man I mean his personal Okay, now choreography. I, I'm gonna give it to her with the choreography and all of that, but the individual performance of broad greatness, I think, might just always have an edge on motherfuckers, man. It's just, but Beyonce, man, it was great performance. Her voice was strong. Seemed like she came out here. Oh, she dominated over any bitch now. It, She's the most dominant performer now. There's nobody greater than her in this era now. In this time, I say she number four all time. I say there's no white people is this on her level. There's no white people on her level in performing. No white bitches is on that level. No white bitches is close. She she pushing up against. James Brown Prime, which I didn't even see. You had to look at some black and white shit. Mike and Prince. You feel me? And you know, man, like the, pr- 
Prince, I mean, Prince and Mike, to me, is like, it's so close. It's so close. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, Beyonce don't know how to, see, it's, Mike was so great, it's just, but Beyonce did good, man. Bitches was crying. Bitches was crying. My people reported to me from there. Bitches was crying for Beyonce while she was going. It was an emotional, spiritual event for bitches in there. In that performance. Man. At the highest levels. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to the Beehive. I'm going to get off of that. Move on to the next thing. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes, man, and still on, still on news. Okay. Uh, Kendrick won the Pulitzer Prize. Kendrick won the Pulitzer Prize. That was a legendary and really is just modern reality catching up with what people already know. You got these hip-hop albums, these masterpieces, man, like. And see, and while we on Kendrick right now, see, no matter what, okay, uh, uh, what's his name just dropped? Uh, J. Cole just dropped, okay. J. Cole dropped a very dope album, very comprehensive. It's a lot of good cuts on there, man. Um, like I said, it's a slap me on the head album. This little pump, I like that. Um, but I don't know. I gotta listen more. I I just think Kendrick have a more powerful theme. There's a more powerful theme in Kendrick's album. So I'm gonna give him the edge. That's why they gave him the Pulitzer right there because of the. The level of the complicated album, like the whole structure of the album, but I gotta listen to J. Cole's album more to see because he he have a structure there as well. But it, the 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 damn structure was at the highest level. It was with the with the with the intro and the outro blending in, and you could play the album backwards. I don't know. I gotta see what uh. The final analysis with Cole, I, like I said, I just got to listen to it. I got the surface listen. Um, is it man? Niggas is coming with it. This is pretty dope. But anyway, Kendrick won the Pulitzer surprise. Hip hop. I'm telling you, man, it's album. I'm gonna tell you, man. You want to give Kendrick the Pulitzer? I'm telling you, man. That first, that Slick Rick album, nigga, Children's Story album, nigga, by Slick Rick, had to be, have to be like one of, one of the most creative genius albums. Niggas don't know how much artistic, um, creative spirit this nigga Slick Rick lost by going to prison, man. I'm telling you, man. You too, man. He's at the high levels of children's story. That whole album, man, was, nigga, that was 89. That album. Anyway, I'm on a tangent. Shoot, shout out to uh, J. Cole for dropping a high creativity on these niggas. Only him and Kendrick is battling right now on that level. There's nobody else. Nobody else is around. Extension, to me, ain't, he not in that, um, he on some other shit. Only them two niggas is warring in that spear of high, that's a high creativity spear. The sphere. <laughs> high creativity in this motherfucker. All right, let's keep it going, keep it moving, keep it popping, keep it, keep it, uh, mo. All right, Kanye West tweets and summons see the God out to listen to his music because he, he, he hell of a self-conscious about it. 
Then he tweets his album gonna be seven songs, which I know is probably gonna be some creative, really like two or three songs in one song, song change beats five times or some shit, weird shit, I'm telling you. But I'm looking forward to all Kanye creativity, nigga. I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to hear it. I wanna see what you got going, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for all niggas with bringing great creativity to the table, man. I love hearing these niggas go hard. J. Cole, I love that, man. Niggas go hard with the creativity on you motherfuckers not going hard on the creativity. You feel me? All right, where we at? What we got? I would talk about Drake, but fuck that. All right. Reader, listener, email. Reader, listener, email. And, um, yeah, man. Our first reader, listener, email comes from a nigga from Oakland, California. He writes to Boss Mike. He say, Boss Mac. I was recently down your way in Long Beach visiting my ex-bitch. While I was there, she was my bitch. While I was there, the energy was weird. I've been feeling like she fucking somebody. We in a long-distance relationship. While I was out there, by the second night, this bitch got on some Cardi B shit and went through my phone while I was asleep. I don't even know how she broke my code. I woke up at 4 a.m. This bitch tried to super press me about every bitch in my phone. She pressed me like a federal agent in this motherfucker. She had screenshotted conversations and text them to herself. She started quoting conversations. And then she dumped me. I was like, cool. So I got on the phone and rescheduled my flight to leave right now. And then I bounced. I'm glad it's over. That long distance shit was bullshit, but I'm trying to understand some shit. I'm sure she was fucking somebody else. The energy was fucked up the whole time. I just wonder why all the drama. I have been told her we could end it. Why all this go through my phone and try to make it seem like I'm the bad guy shit and drama. And then calling me all the time now. <coughs> Yeah, man, I mean, you know, I think, like, when bitches be doing dirt, everybody be guilty, you know, bitches be doing dirt, still love you, though, you know, she probably, since it's a long distance relationship, she probably, you know, fucking some dude, but he really like a... A serious number two nigga You know what I mean <coughs> She don't want him to be the main dude So maybe she ain't finna Bring that to the surface of, You know this is Dick for when you not around You know what I mean So Then you know With you You come down <coughs> You could pick up on that energy And then you know, she paranoid because of what she doing. She know you fucking some brother bitches. So, fuck it. Go through your phone. Find some evidence. And then, you know, hey, if, if she dump you first. And then, you know, you never find out about her dirt if it's dirt. You know what I mean? But then a bitch might not realize what that really means. For her, you know, to really... You know, go through with the dumping and then you accept the dumping. You like, I'm cool, I'm out. You accept the dumping. Like a player, I I pray yeah, that's some real that's some real nigga shit. You know I'm an advocate of handling dumpings like that. Okay, bitch, good. Okay, we done? Okay, I'm out. I'm out. That's always golden to be able to bounce. 
that probably disturbed the bitch. That's that really disturbed the bitch. The bouncing disturbed the bitch right there. You feel me? That always disturbed the bitch. So you supposed to fold up under all that pressure and press. You feel me? So that was a good job. But you was immune because you was already preparing yourself for it too. Hey man, like I said, man, people be, you know, good job, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Bitches be guilty you know, trying to find shit. I, a bitch is, to me, it's over when a bitch go through the phone, man. I'm, I'm not fucking around with none of that Cardi B shit. You go through the phone and you're done. Fuck it. jump over the lock, you figure out some shit, you look in there and you see whatever. As soon as you start talking, I'm just, it's done. You done. You ain't even got to finish, bitch. Okay, we done. You went through my shit, you done. I don't feel like thinking about it. It's too much to think about. Just be fired. <laughs> Not that valuable, right? <laughs> even if a bitch is valuable, man, I do a, I do demonstrations of, um, just because, just just to show that uh, that I have the resolve and the fortitude to go that the distance for it all. Just bitch, done, bitch. Fuck it, let's let it be done, bitch. You feel me? Yeah. Extra relics at Ball Smack Top Soil, man. Remember, if y'all niggas got questions for the Ball Smack, email me at ballsmacknosislive at gmail.com. Also, you can get at me in the DMs, man, or whatever. Holla at a nigga. Shoot that out here, man. I try to get to it and be able to bring some shit to your table for you one time. Yeah. Celebrating 420 throughout the show. 420 vibes. Thank God for Kush. I really don't do nothing else. You feel me? I used to fuck with um, ecstasy in the, in like the 90s. But you know what? The, that that X man. You know why I don't like that X. dark <laughs> this is a dark thing to say too man but two reasons why I don't like ecstasy I don't like being that nice to bitches you feel me and then it I think like deliver like such a peak performance that you you would have to repeat that all the time man it's, I remember I remember back in the days a nigga did had a few a few a few a few scenarios where that was the jump off like the you know the first session was like a nigga was all the way geeking you feel me like <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, and just did some marathon, you know what I'm saying, way out shit with a bitch. So when the next time rolled around and nigga wasn't on that page, it was like some, like, like <laughs> some, a couple of minutes sleep shit. The bitch highly disappointed in the, in the nigga. But anyway, yeah, I don't know why I went on that tangent. Our next reader listener email comes from a nigga from Los Angeles. He writes the ball smack. He say ball smack. Let me pull this shit up. He say ball smack. Okay, a nigga from Los Angeles writes the ball smack. He say ball smack. I got a nice bitch on the team. Shit was good for a few months. Then she starts pressing me about church. I went once or twice, announced myself as a visitor, but my nigga, I work every day. I can't go every Sunday. Plus, there's a weird energy up in there I can't put my finger on. But the bitch is on some. I got to join the church or we not equally yoke shit. 
I really like this bitch. How do I navigate this? It seems like it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, man. Sometimes, man. Um, you know, um, that shit happen, man. Religion in the middle of the thing, man. It changes, you know, or reveal, reveal it. And try to, you know, get you to go along with it, you know, under the under the pressure of uh, shit being a rap. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, man, that ultimatum shit, man. I, I ain't a good ultimatum dude. You know what I'm saying? I be, I be wanting to disappoint a bitch so I can see what happened. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest with you. Okay, fuck it, man. Then I guess you can't kick it, man. It was good kicking it with you then. You know what I'm saying? Because I got to I gotta go to work. You feel me? And, uh, yeah. I pull up every, every blue moon, but I got to go to work, though, man. I got to go get this paper. It's right there in this paper. So I love you, but I got to get this paper. Sometimes, man, them compromises, man, when you be making them compromises, man, they be... Chipping away at your structure, man. Them compromises. I don't be compromising with bitches like that, man. I'm in the pressure. Ultimatum pressure. It's it, it, some shift in the, in, the, in the respect levels, man. When you when you comply to shit like that, it's a shift. Then we move on to the next thing we're going to try to get over on. You know what I'm saying? You know? Bitch, be like, I don't like you hanging around this nigga, that nigga. I don't like you going over there. Why you got to go out that night? Nigga, why you leaving the house, nigga? I don't know. It's just the beginning of shit, man. People, man, it's fucking crazy. Uh. Ball smack top soil. You know how we get down. Just good game for motherfuckers, man. I just love doing this shit, man. You feel me? Uh, what else we got? I think we're going to hold up right there, man. We're going to hold up right here, man. Um, oh, yeah. Shout out to 21 Savage, man. 21 Savage. He announced that he was returning back to his gangster shit. You feel me? After fucking around with that bitch. You feel me? Letting that bitch compromise his whole shit. Out there at the goddamn slut walk with the I'm a whole sign. How you feel about that shit now, nigga? Man. Now that bitch, you know what? That bitch did exactly what I said she was gonna do, man. She was gonna fuck around and and and, and, and throw water on your shit, make your shit dull, man. Just just from fucking with that bitch, it devalued you, man. I don't know how that shit work, man. Bitches be stealing clout, man. I wonder if it's like some type of magic spell them bitches got called a still clout spell. Still clout. Her and Black China out here draining clout from these young ass niggas. YBN Almighty J devalue himself, make himself less than proposing, talking about marrying me on the post a picture of a bitch and talking about marrying me. Now, I don't know if a nigga was joking or playing. They probably would. I don't know, man. That joking take power away from you, man. Even if you're joking, it take power away from you. Posting a picture of an old bitch talking about marrying me. And you's a young and up and coming nigga. Supposed to be having a whole lot of bad bitches serving. You out here letting this bitch Dracula you, man, on some bullshit, man. Niggas need mentors out here for this shit, man. Not taking advantage of the skills at all. That's the final rant, man. We'll close it out with that, man. For real. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out. The Top Mac Nigga Show is a Ball Smack Industries production. Put your hands together for our special musical guest. I ain't gonna even say no names.
I got angels running away. I got demons hunting me. I know pop with 25. I know Jesus 33. I tell death to keep a distance. I think he obsessed with me. I say, God, that's the one. I know she would die for me. They want a barcode on my wrist. To auction off the kids that don't fit their description of a utopia. Like a problem won't exist if I just don't exist If I grew up without a single pot to piss And pardon me for venting Congress got the nerve to call itself religious Rich just getting richer We just trying to live our life Mama mixed the vodka with the Sprite They killed my cousin with the pocket knife From my uncle on the phone He was gone for more than half my life He got out a year and then he died I was on the road Talking to my father on the phone Left the city when I was just born None of them would get alone Mama begging hippo when it goes I was chilling with my niggas poop Now they trying to take a slide Don't mean shit to a nigga that ain't never had shit Oh, I don't see, I don't see, I don't freeze, light don't leave, I don't mean light to me. Tell me you'll be okay, tell me happier days, tell me that she might be.